You're watching TVC Breakfast. It's World Press Freedom Day, a day set aside to celebrate the principles of press freedom, assess its state throughout the world, uphold media independence and pay tribute to journalists who have paid the ultimate prize in the line of duty. The theme for this year's commemoration is Media for Democracy, Journalism and Elections in Times of Disinformation. All right, uh, we'll be looking at uh, the press, World Press Freedom Day today and the world is celebrating it and what contribution the media has had to democracies across the world is part of what we'll be looking at right now. And I have with me a journalist, Ambrose Igboke. Ambrose, good morning. Good morning, Mike. It's nice to have you join me, really. Thank you very much. Well, uh, well, happy World Press Freedom Day. Well, we're happy we can talk. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the media is often seen or, or, or classified as the fourth estate of the realm. After the legislature, the executive, the judiciary, media is the next upholding democracy up there. But when it comes to the freedom of the press, how free do you think or would you say the press has been, especially for Nigeria? Well, since 1999, mm -hmm. the Nigerian press have enjoyed some latitude in terms of uh, reportage and uh, where we know where we are coming from. Um, there was, remember the days of guerrilla journalism mm -hmm. as practiced by Tel mm -hmm. and the news magazine those days because we had it really, really tough during the military era, especially from December 31st, 1983, when the regime of the then General uh, Muhammad Buhari came in and clamped down with the notorious decree then, and then with that proscribed press freedom. We went there to the, well, uh, to the IBB era that also conscripted press, and then, of course, you will know the unfortunate issue of uh, Deligiwa, who was brutally murdered. And over the years, we have had a series of uh, journalists being murdered in Nigeria for speaking out. Um, but right now, um, we have more latitude uh, for freedom of our expression. And um, a lot of TV stations are also coming out with morning programs that tend to interrogate what yeah. government is doing. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's been good. But over the years also, the last assassinations we have had, you know, journalists have been brutally murdered in this country yeah. over them. So, but what? we are... We are more proscribed now by um, the issue of commercial. Press freedom is being actually more curbed now by c commercial issues rather than uh, maybe a government. Okay. Now, when it comes to... Okay, if we have time, we're going to talk about that, uh, that area of things. Now, the press, which is meant to hold, or the media, which is meant to hold government to account on behalf of the people, how much of that duty originally would you say the media is doing? Uh, currently, the Nigerian media, I must admit, I'm a journalist uh, and a media practitioner, I must indict ourselves. Mm. We are not how doing enough. Uh, when you go to the newspapers, especially the uh, prints, you will find out that what most of us would do is what we call event reportage. Uh, we do press release uh, reportage where we get um, uh, statements from the various departments, ministries, agencies, from uh, corporate bodies, organizations, and different things. Yeah. Sometimes uh, it is very, very um, amazing that some of these press releases are actually put verbatim on the uh, uh, this thing, uh, newspapers. And the funny thing is that the writer of the press release is also the person who signs and say, oh, Mr. Ambrose Iboke says something, and then he said Mr. Ambrose Iboke again at the end. So journalists are not, uh, we are not awake. Investigative journalism is almost dead. We are singing in knock dimities for in investigative journalism in Nigeria. Uh, next, uh, Lord Jodet tried to bring out next, uh, and, and it went moribund. So apart from few, uh, one or two investigation, flash of investigation, nothing is happening in investigative journalism right now. All right. Uh, going forward, what, what do you think really needs to change? Because the ownership of media, media organization, a media outfit also has a contribution in the, in the regard sure. you're talking about. When we look at the ownership of the media in Nigeria, the print, uh, the electronic, we found that a majority of those uh, houses were owned by politicians, by money bags, businessmen and money, who are politicians mostly. The ones owned by the uh, core journalists, it's almost fed out. It faded out. Only just one. And that one was almost, it was bought over. If not, they're trying to relaunch themselves now. The blogging has not done much because of the issue of fake news. So we still need to verify from the traditional news <laughs> online system for us to get the fake news. Yeah. So the fake news syndrome is, you know, copy, is affecting us negatively and also the ownership. So way forward, we uh, recommend that media, uh, media practitioners, journalists should come together and seek funding 
to be able to establish media houses so that we can come back to the days of the tale of this world, the days of news watch. True journalism. You're watching TVC Breakfast. It is World Press Freedom Day, a day set aside to celebrate the principles of press freedom, assess its state throughout the world, uphold media independence, and pay tribute to journalists who have paid the ultimate price in the line of duty. The theme for this year's commemoration is media for democracy, journalism, and elections in times of uh, disinformation. Nigeria currently ranks 120th on the Global Press Freedom Index, down from 119th position in place uh, in 2018. Now, in Africa, Namibia, which ranked 23rd on the list, is now the best ranked country in Africa, followed by Cape Verde, Ghana, South Africa, Burkina Faso. Now, Nigeria is ranked 35th in Africa behind countries of uh, Congo Brazzaville, Mozambique, and Angola. Well, the top 10 countries where, press, uh, where the press is most free, according to the index, are Norway, Finland, Sweden, Netherlands, Denmark, Switzerland, New Zealand, Jamaica, Belgium, and Costa Rica. Joining me is a journalist, Ambrose Igoke. Thank you, Ambrose, for joining us uh, this morning on TVC Breakfast. Thank you, Veronica. Uh, looking at the theme for this year's World Press Freedom Day, uh, one remembers uh, the election we just heard. How would you evaluate um, how the press fared, especially when it comes to ensuring that it gives accurate details with uh, the elections? Uh, one of my greatest disappointments in the last concluded election was uh, that the press did not do enough to educate the voters. INEC failed in that regard woefully, but I didn't expect the press to also you know, follow in that uh, uh, guise. What happened was that there was supposed to be a public enlightenment, but uh, now what we have mostly in the press is, um, especially in the print, is actually cash and carry kind of press. Where How the do you mean? Where they flood the whole place with um, commercial activity. Although I know a media house has to survive. Definitely. And, uh, but again, uh, at the expense of raw news. Uh, as said, you know, most of them, you press releases, we have adverts of politicians. We have sometimes front pages of uh, newspapers being desecrated uh, by political news that were paid for. And so that did not contribute much. But as, apart from that small aspect, I think the press did very well in the, in the, the last election. They, were, they raised issues uh, up to the level of discourse, national right. discourse. But again, you could see that they were all tainted uh, along party lines. Um, the professionalism was doused by partisan interest. And that is not good for and our democracy. And that's affecting our democracy. Yes, it's, it's not good for our democracy because you could see that journalists were arguing along partisan interest instead of facing the facts the way it is. Now, does that in any way hamper press freedom? Yeah, the press freedom in Nigeria is cocooned in a lot of intricate complexities. What is it? Is that, first of all, the Freedom of Information Act has not been fully implemented because yes. when you, the government has refused to play ball. Because, for example, when you go, when you write to the ministries or to the departments and agencies, even to the presidency or to governments and ask for uh, information, they refuse to disclose it. They play ball with you until you get tired of it. They tire you out. So what is happening is that the Freedom of Information Act has not been uh, done. And the journalists are still being hauled into uh, deten de uh, detention indiscriminately. All right. We have seen that happen a couple of times. So it is, it, it has, it's not yet to huru for us here. So Na Nigeria is ranked uh, 35th when it comes to the World Press Freedom Index. In Africa, Nigeria is ranked 35th. But uh, around the world, Nigeria dropped from 199 to 100, sorry, 119 to 120. What does that imply? The, what it, that implies is what we have been saying, that press freedom in Nigeria is not yet what is really So where do freedom. we improve? Uh, what we need to improve is, first of all, that we should, uh, the press people, especially journalists, should look more at national interest because the, the politicians have turned the press boys to... Um, more of uh, beggars, cap in hand, you know, to sustain the media houses. You need government patronage. They're the biggest advertisers. You need uh, all kinds. You know, so they now dictate to you. Sometimes news of national interest are being blacked out because some political interests don't want it to be seen. And so and sometimes we see the headlines in front page that are very, very in, uh, irrelevant. But because it was paid for, they put right. it there. So we should now come back to the ethics of the profession and see how we can redirect ourselves to the right dire uh, direction so Ambrose. that Nigeria can have the political, the press verb 
to put the other uh, areas of government. We have to leave trust. it at this point. Ambrose Igboke, thank you for your time on TVC Breakfast. Thank you very much.